In her article titled, Ethical Concerns Mount as AI Takes a Bigger Decision-Making Role, author Christina Pagnese <coughs> states, with reference to artificial intelligence, quote, it's game-changing promise to do things like improve efficiency, bring down costs, and accelerate research and development have been tempered of late with worries of these complex, opaque systems may do more societal harm than economic good. Now, there are certainly situations where artificial intelligence is a very useful tool. I'm sure you can think of a couple of these. But what is less, less well-known are the drawbacks associated with an automated future. Throughout this speech, I hope to persuade you to think twice before you assume auto automation is overall benefit to society. I hope you do this by discussing the drawbacks of full automation from an economic, ethical, security, and responsibility perspective. Economics. Quote, a study conducted in 2015 by Frey et al. estimates that 47% of total U.S. employment is in the high-risk category when it comes to replacement by computerization, end quote, Guy Warwick. A different study showed that about 9% of jobs are fully automatable. This means that roughly 38% of work, working Americans will have a job shift with an overall net loss of 9%, which in the case of the U.S. workforce is millions of Americans. And that graph on the far right is a graph of unemployment from 2009 to 2019. You can't see it, but at the end is about 3.6%. So you'd add nine to that, you'd be at 12, which would literally be off the charts. According to Daniel Wagner, quote, conventional wisdom suggests that AI will continue to benefit high-skilled workers with a greater degree of flexibility, creativity, and strong problem-solving skills. But it is certainly possible, and even likely, that AI-powered robots can increasingly displace high educated and skilled professionals like doctors, architects, and even computer programmers. Now most of the time when we hear this, we hear about your construction workers, your factory workers being displaced. So sometimes we doubt this, but if I remember back to my informative speech, I mentioned that radiologists and the doctor field are already being replaced by these machines. And it's not to say it won't affect these lower, these manual labor jobs, it'll just affect more people than you realize. And while it's hurting your common worker, it is greatly benefiting corporations as they no longer have to pay for labor. According to Wagner, quote, rather than serving to flatten the degree of global equality, an AI-dominated future could well result in the greatest concentration of resources and power the world has ever seen. And that's kind of what that graph in the middle is showing, that the top 1% of adults in America own approximately 46% of all wealth. And with AI moving forward, if we go fully automated some jobs, that gap would grow even further. Now that I've discussed the economic dilemma regarding artificial intelligence and its time, uh, and it's a good time to address the ethical dilemma as well. Quote, another challenge is the fact that the wor working of some AI systems cannot be fully explained. End quote, Lee et al. This is because AI essentially sets its own rules, like I stated before. It takes a list of inputs and gives you output. This is what they call an opaque system. Now, think of it as a, a door, like this one, a door rather than a window. With an opaque system, we can't see what's happening, but with like a normal computer program, we can see exactly what's leading to certain decisions. This becomes a problem, as Nate et al. says, quote, when the setting or the context changes, AI systems can fail unexpectedly and drastically. AI can go from being extremely intelligent to extremely naive in an instant. And like I said, this is, that's because AI takes past instances and uses it to predict future outcomes. The other area where there is ma major economic or ethical dilemma occurring is with regard to autonomous weapons in the military, also known as laws. Now, an argument for laws is mean we don't have to send in our own troops, which could result in a less, or lower loss of life. While that is a fair point, I argue that the result is a greater loss of life over time. Quote, Peter Soro argued in a, at a 2014 meeting of experts on laws hosted by the UN that if we dehumanize warfare by developing laws, then there will be less, there will be loss of justice, accountability, and responsibility. Dr. Soro also argued that allowing an automatic process to decide to take a human life diminishes the value of a human life. End quote, Guy Warwick. And by diminishing the value of a human life, I feel like there will be more attacks that will occur on foreign people. And for most Americans, that's not a problem, but what happens when our enemies finally have enough of this and come back at us with similar technology? Since that had to do with national security, it would be a good way to transition into the next topic of overall security. 
as more system, quote, as more systems, including military and intelligence systems, become AI enabled, thinking about how adversaries might exploit them, exploit them becomes more critical, end quote, E at all. This is because like any other computer, an AI system can be hacked. And it's, this, is, this is done by manipulating inputs. And since most of the inputs a computer program or an AI machine gets now come from the internet, uh, most of the time you just have to put a bunch of false data on the internet and the AI would take that and produce faulty results. And this, not only is this affecting like national security, but personal security as well. As, as we've seen, the government might, this could be something the government uses to kind of spy on its citizens as an extension of the Patriot Act, which was enacted just after 9-11, which essentially gave the U.S. permission to spy on its citizens that it deemed a terrorist, but, or a potential terrorist, but it, it's shown that it, they just spy on random citizens as well. Some of these concerns can be managed with proper regulation, but as you'll find out, artificial intelligence is not the easiest thing to regulate. Quote, given its power and unexpected ubiquity, some argue that the use of AI should be tightly regulated, but there's little consensus on how that should be done and, about, and who should make these rules, end quote, has me. One thing that most people can agree on is that artificial and growth and prominence, it will need to be regulated. The question of how we regulate it is one that's up for debate. Evans Guy Warwick says, quote, the central issue of these AI systems is a case of wrong diagnosis, treatment, or an incorrect surgical procedure. Who is held responsible, end quote. The difficulty of this question is well sum summarized by Kochlenberg when he says, quote, however, in, technologi in technological action, it is notoriously difficult to ascribe moral responsibility due to the so-called problem of many hands. Many people are involved in all often long, casual histories that lead up to particular outcomes. Basically what this means is there's so many people involved from the people, person who designed it to the person who interprets the results that it's hard to place blame on one individual person for a faulty like, medical eye, like a faulty surgery or faulty decision. But this also, you also do have to place blame on somebody, otherwise people, it can be manipulated and used for, used for bad. Now that I've discussed some of the impact artificial intelligence can have on the areas of economics, ethics, security, and responsibility, I hope you think twice before answering if we truly want an autonomous future. Quote, for a start, they need to answer the following question. They need to figure out what should be done, justify why it should be done, and by whom it should be done, and so on. End quote, Kochlenberg. With no clear answers to any of these questions, we should pause, or at least slow, our advancement towards a fully autonomous future sources and thank you for listening to my speech.